morning good evening and good night wherever you're watching from i'm mika and i'm here with another uh god want me to talk about because i'm like lord what about you want me to talk about this okay you want me to talk about this so boom i'm here with another god want me to talk about my daddy want me to talk about holy spirit want me to talk about and here we are so yeah today we're talking about restoration restoration yes we all love restoration don't we yeah we all love restoration i do i do Hey, I know this is a good time, baby. Yes. So today we'll be coming from, don't worry about it. You'll know when I get there. So we're going to pray first. God, I thank you just for this great and glorious day, a day that you have made for me to see, them to see, us to see, we to see, pleased to see. Um, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I'm so blessed. Have your way, Holy Spirit. I decrease completely as you increase in me. The floor is yours. Have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Mm. Okay, so today we'll be talking about restoration. And the restoration that I'll be talking about is something that God just gave me revelation on maybe like a few weeks ago, actually. Uh, maybe I don't know. I don't know how long. It wasn't long. And it's been going on for, I don't know how long, about years, for years now. And I'm just now getting the revelation of God restoring me. Yes, I'm just now getting the revelation of God restoring me in my life. I know, honey. That's how a girl slow down so you can see what's going on. I know. So today I be coming from Joel. I mean, it's everybody's favorite scripture, Joel 2, 25 through um through 27. 25 through 27. And of course, I'm gonna read the um the amplified version because it what? Amps me up. Yes, I read the amp because I it made me amp. Okay, so today we'll be coming from Joel chapter 2, verses 25, 26, and 27. Just three verses because God wants me to talk about restoration. Yes, restoration and God's type of restoration and how he restores and how he brings things back together and restores it and put a bow on it and make it like new and how he makes all things beautiful when he restores, Okay. So, Joel 2.25 in the Amplified Version says, And I will compensate you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the creeping locust, the stripping locust, and the gnawing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. And you shall know without any doubt that I am in the midst of Israel, in the midst of Shemekha, okay, to protect and bless you. And that I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people will never be put to shame. Amen. God bless the reading. That's how they say in church. God add a blessing to the reading of the word and all that. So, Father, I just thank you. All right. <clears throat> If you don't know, I don't know if I ever talked about this on my channel, but prior to me getting married um, to my my man, I was in a relationship before him. I was married before him. Before him. I had got married at the age of 20 years old, okay, to um, what most people would call a high school sweetheart. And um, <clears throat> God was nowhere in it. He had nothing to do with it. He didn't even approve of it. Come on now, because when it got married on sneak, sneak on the low, low, and it was a like it was, uh, -uh it, it was not a blissful day or a blissful moment. Like it was full of confusion and just full of just everything. And we went down to the courthouse. He and I, I don't even remember the man's name that who married us. Whatever the case, we got on the train, went down there, got married. Boom, that's it. We had a one-year-old son that I had the year prior. I was nineteen. I had him the year prior. Me and um, his dad had been together since we were 16 years old. So 16 and get married at 20 years. So we had been, been together for years. Okay. So um, to say the least, no, to say the most, high key, that was a horrible marriage. To say the least, to say the most, high key, it was one of the worst experiences I had ever been through. Um, I don't know if you know what it feels like, what it feels like to love someone. A lot and in return they give you 
you know, they're behind to kiss at every turn. Anything that goes wrong is your fault. They just was not a good person. They're just not a good person. Like every form of first Corinthians, um, 13, I believe. I don't know if it's first or second Corinthians. You know, I just gotta say this. Thing. That right there, mm -mm, it was nowhere in there. Everything they say love is, that was it was the total opposite of that. Um, I was not perfect in our marriage. No one is. He wasn't perfect in the marriage. No one is. However, certain things and certain whatever you, uh, mm -mm, just certain stuff just uh, -uh line drawn. So I say that. Um, and what I went on to ultimately in 2014, I said, you know what, Father. Because what he would do, he would leave and come back, leave and come back, leave and come back, leave and come back. And I would always let him back. I would always let him back. I would always let him back. He'll be gone for two days, gone for three days, gone for a day, gone for a few hours. And I would always let him back. But this one time in 2014, I said, no. And before he went out the door, this last time, I said, when you leave this time, sir, you cannot come back. Okay? You can't come back, baby. It's over with. I ain't, I'm not with it. And he gave me the finger, literally, and a, a, some more explicits, and he left, okay? So, let me rewind it back just a bit to the year prior. The year prior, I had two kids. We had two kids by now. And one on the way. Okay? I was pregnant again. Yes, I was pregnant again. So, I had two kids and one on the way. And this pregnancy, it was it was kind of different for me. I'm not sure, but I was excited about being a mom again because at the end of the day, all the love that I didn't receive from my then present husband, I put all that love that I didn't receive and I just got all of it from my sons, you know, because I had two boys by this time. Just got all of it from my sons and they just, you know, kept me strong, kept me going through. The, I mean, like, it's a good time. And <clears throat> I ended up getting pregnant again. Mind you, I was working at the airport and that job... Uh, it, it, it was hell, okay? So I went through hell at work and then came home and had I had no peace anywhere I went. Like, no peace, nowhere I went. So I was at work going through it and then I would come home and I would be dealing with it. And all the while, I'm pregnant, okay? I'm pregnant. And so eventually, I, I went to the doctor one day. This is 2013. I went to the doctor and she was like, um, you know, they take your blood. They, uh... Do the ultrasounds and you know you know as you go into pregnancy and all that it's my third time around baby i'm a pro at this I, I do this you know what i'm saying and she's like um your hgc levels they they're going down and so i'm like what you mean she was like yeah at the you know the stage that you're at now the level it's supposed to be it's not there okay we're gonna do an ultrasound so boom we do the ultrasound looking for listen for the baby heartbeat we hear nothing so i'm like you know she was like well you know we just you know we're gonna uh we gonna, and I was like, well, you know, maybe, you know, just giving all these different excuses as to why maybe, you know, this not, it's not working out. And so while I'm not hearing the baby, maybe, you know, maybe he's sleep. Maybe he's sleep. <laughs> maybe, maybe this going off. So she was like, all right, so we'll come back in another week. The next week, you know, just to test my levels again, whatever the case may be. So we go, I go again, same thing. She was like, they're even lower now. So I'm like, she was like, so this here, I'm going to just say it, it looks, it's looking like a sign of miscarriage. And I was like, what you mean? Baby, I don't, my baby's going to die. Baby, they live the full time. As a matter of fact, even if they born early, even if, you know what I'm saying? Like a, um, my son prior to that, he was born um, three or four, four weeks early. So I'm like, I do this. You know what I'm saying? Like I do this, you know, it's so she like, okay, so. We're, okay, so next week, you know, we're, you know, because by this, I'm not spotting, I'm not bleeding, I'm not, none of, like, none of that going on. It's just my levels are dropping. It's dropping. So the next week, I come in, and she like, Miss, Miss, Miss Thomas, listen, okay? I know you, you're not, you don't want to or even accept, like, but the baby is, is, is we're going to have to schedule an appointment to remove it. So I'm like, What? Are you serious? So I go home. I let him know. And he like, what? He has no, like, clue or even understanding as to what I'm saying or whatever the case may be. His first response is, well, like, oh, well, I mean, probably one mine anyway. That's all I can see. Probably one mine anyway. And I'm like, yes, 
Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay. So, I'm like, so I tell him about the appointment, when I have to go and all this, that, and the third. So, prior to this, um, my father, my dad, he very supportive, very hands-on at that time. So, he's like, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to support you. So, my husband at the time then, he said, if he's going to go, I'm not going because at this point, you have all the support that you need, okay? You don't need me here. So I'm like, what do you mean? Like, you're my husband. You're the father of the child. Like, he's like, he's dead. So it's not really no reason for me to even go and all this. And I'm like. So come the day of my um, scheduled operation, my, he goes to work. The, my then husband goes to work. My mom stays with my, um, our kids. And my dad takes me to the hospital to um, get my baby removed. So I go to the hospital. I'm showing. I got this black dress on. I'm showing. Like, my stomach is like, you know, you can see that I'm pregnant, okay? Because, you know, I ain't never about this big. So you can see that I'm, this is my third child. So you know how that go. If you've been pregnant, you know how it is. So I'm going, like, I'm showing. Like, I have a baby inside of me. I go. I do the opera. I sign my papers. All the day and the third. My husband, not my husband, but my um, father and my pastor at the time, we pray together prior to me going um, for them to uh, remove the baby from me. And I come back out of this operation room. And um, my stomach is flat. Yeah. I mean, it's flat as if I was never, ever, ever pregnant. As if, like, it was never, never a thing. And so I was, and I just cried the entire time. You know, I was just was just in disbelief that um, my body didn't do what it, I was used to it doing, that um, God would allow um, my baby to die, that even the, all the love that I was having, even though my then husband did not show me that love, I got that through my children. Like I love them so much. And this was just another form of love for me to be able to have. And I was just devastated. Like, absolutely devastated. And, you know, I went on to just try to do life as usual. But at that time, I immediately, that day when I went to that hospital and I was by myself, my husband at the time, not there, my husband at the time chose to not support me in this. Something that, you know, maybe I don't know what his thing was or what his problem was, his way of grieving. I don't, it doesn't, that matter this much to me. But the thing is, I was used to that behavior before this day but i would think that he would have you know not been this way on this day of any other day like at right on this day okay but that was not the case so i come back um home he come back from work he didn't ask me how i'm doing he didn't ask me what's tea he didn't ask like nothing from that day i said father you get me out of this oh my goodness i promise you i promise listen I don't know what I want, but I know this ain't it. <clears throat> I don't want anyone that's this that's selfish, that's mean, that's uh, just just uh, just not loving, not support. I do not. I don't know what I want in a man, but this is what I don't want. I do not want this father. I don't want this. And the thing is, I didn't. I had a prayer life, but it was nothing. My rela I, I wasn't saved for real. I was very lukewarm. I sure was. My God, I was very, I was very lukewarm. But even in that time, I could all I can look back now and I can see the presence of God and His hand on me even then. If that, I can still feel His presence at times. I can still, you know, all, all of that. But in that moment, that day, I made my like. If you get me out of this, if bro leave any other time after this, like it's a wrap. I don't want to have nothing else to do. As a matter of fact, I'm divorced. I have. Abandonment, like a bad, all, he's out of here. I don't want to have nothing else to do with him. Like if he leave again, I do not want to have anything else. This 2013, so 2014, um, this this time, I, like I said, I fast forward, and this last time him leaving, this right here, was March 2014, and. After I, let me say, after I lost, after I had lost the baby, I went to, through an intense cycle of depression, anxiety, just spells of crying, not eating, not focusing, not being able to do nothing, not being able to just show up and just do the normal everyday things. I was 
devastated. You hear me? I started going to therapy for the um for the first time. I started, you know, experiencing just like different type of warfare. I see it as warfare now because I have an understanding of the spirit realm. I would see things and just little little demons and spirits and stuff in my home and all these different things, like literally for me to lose my mind, okay? That was the whole agenda was for them to drive me nuts, okay? So I would be going through that from the time I lost my baby until, you know, I don't know how long. So I ended up moving from the, the apartment that I was in to another apartment. And with this apartment, you know, he, my then husband, he wasn't, you know, changed, but he had gotten better. So I thought, okay. But eventually time went on and baby, he showed his colors again. Okay. But this time he showed his colors by packing up his bags again and saying, I'm, I'm up out of here. I'm out of here. And I was like, <laughs> if you leave this time, sir, you cannot come back. You can, this is the last, I'm not dealing with this anymore. If you leave this time, you cannot come back. It is over. Okay. It's over. He flipped me the finger, some more splitters, and he, he, he went out the door and I was like, all right, it's just me, my babies. And that's it. Like that's, that's it. So I'm like, all right. So I went to work, met, doing my thing, worried about me, all this, you know, let him do him, whatever the case. He wasn't trying to come back. He wasn't trying to do nothing. He wasn't, we weren't in communication with each other. None of that, like nothing. So around April of 2014, I would say a month later, a month later, I mind my business. And I'm just now like coming back to work after, you know, going through losing the baby, intense therapy, and just other things I have been doing. I was in and out of work. I wasn't really committed to even being to work. So I get back, I go, I come back to work April of 2014. Husband done left. He gone. Just me and the babies. He done left us with the door open, literally. He left the front door open. He left the front door open. Come on now. I was like, you gonna shut the door? He left it open. So I closed the child. Anyway, so... 2014, I'm out of my business. I'm on the checkpoint where I work at. And this guy come up to me and was like, hi, my name is Quabina. What's yours? And I'm like, Qua what? <laughs> Who are you? Where are you African? Where are you what tribe you from? Okay. So he introduces himself and you know, I'm just like, okay, who is this? Whatever. Father. Mm -mm. I wasn't even thinking about nothing, baby. I was like, okay, 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 okay. And, and went on about my business. So he and I, we would talk. Ever from that day moving forward, like we would talk, like have a little chit chat, nothing, makes, no, not talking on the phone, not none of that. Like we ain't none of that. Like I just see him at work, he'll see me at work. Well, hey, you know all that. Then eventually, I end up asking him for his number because he was, you know, I end up asking him for his number. So we end up over meatloaf. We were talking about a, a barbecue meatloaf. So that's how I got his number. I had done, I had to slide in there. I tried to get his number somehow, some way. Just for me, him to try to, you know, uh, teach me how to cook this barbecue meatloaf. But by this time, we had been talking for maybe like two months. And, you know, yeah, about two months. About a month and a half, two months. And just regular conversations. And I finally got his number. And we would, he would call me, child. I wasn't having it, baby. I, went, uh -uh. I got his number, baby. I still want to try to talk to him. I was like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Then we'll talk here and there, baby. Look, uh-uh. No. Mm -mm. I ain't trying to do it. No, father. I'm not. Mm -mm. I'm not. Mm -mm. I'm not looking for no relationship. I'm not trying to do that. Then eventually, I was like, I like him. I like him. So, long story short, baby. That's, uh, that's my man. Uh-huh. That's my man. Yes, yes. Legally, I was married. But spiritually, spiritually, and in God's eyes, baby, it was a wrap because he had abandoned his family. He had done left. He had done went on about his business. So, Quabina came. Mind you, he and I had been around each other circling for four years. I had been working at the, at the, at the airport. He had been there for four years, and I had never seen him before. Never seen him before. Ever seen him before. He had never seen me. I had never seen him. Never cross paths. Never was like, oh man, we're bump, we got on a movie, bump to each other. Like, seen him before. None of that. For four years, ever. And he was right here, and I was right there. Like, that's how close. It wasn't like he was on international or I was on. No. He was right here. I was right here. 
and we never seen each other ever before. So that's a message in itself, child. That when it's your ordained time to meet who God has for you, when you have surrendered everything and you like, Lord, have your way, you know what I'm saying? And you, or you have a posture in your heart that, Father, whatever you want to do, you know what I'm saying? I never said these words out of my mouth, but I was in a posture like, first of all, I don't want a relationship. I don't, like I have been with this man for this. I, I ain't got time. Don't want to deal with it. I'm not praying for no man. I'm not doing no Sierra prayer. And I ain't do none of that, baby. He, no. I was like, Lord, this is what I don't want. I don't want to deal with this. I don't want, mm -mm. So when I met him, I wasn't, mm -mm. we were just talking. So we end up, you know, just kicking it or whatever. And I liked him. And so eventually he and I, um, we started a relationship and it was a good time. So we, good time, good time, good time, good time, good time, good time. And uh, my then husband, baby, he wasn't, he wasn't trying to, uh, let, he wasn't trying to divorce me. <laughs> he was not trying to, he'll make it so difficult. Make it so difficult. I'm just like, bro, you left. You left. Well, I don't want to pay this. And we ain't, what? You keep what you want to keep. I just want you to say, well, you going to make me quit. You got yeah. So, whatever. 2015, I'm pregnant. Yes, 2015, I'm pregnant. My current man and I, we have this little riff where he lied to me. And due to me not totally dealing with, I would say, things that I felt like I, um, then totally surrendered to God or even talked to him about. I ended up leaving him. I sure did. I ended up leaving him. Pregnant, yes. Me and my sons, we got up out of there. I, uh-uh, nah, because you lying. He was a liar. You a liar. I started, like, comparing, like, uh-uh. When I asked you, he was nothing like him. But due to the fact that I'm still on some uh-uh type stuff, I won't have it. I, I have the zero tolerance for stuff like that. I won't have it. So I ended up leaving. And I stayed gone, oof. For a few months. And while I was gone, that baby I was pregnant with, baby. Oh, I got an abortion. Oh, yeah, I went and got an abortion because I was like, no, uh uh, no, mm mm. No, I'm not finna deal with being having no baby by myself. I already got two kids. He wasn't no good. He left me in the hospital uh, having this baby by myself, and you know, he lying. And, this, and then I'm pregnant. He want to wait till I get pregnant and start lying and doing all that. No, uh uh. So I had to dead it all together. Like, uh uh. Soon after I got an abortion, baby, I lost my mind, literally. Well, I was admitted involuntarily into a mental hospital. And during that time, the very man who I, who lied to me, and y'all, you can believe it was small, whatever the case may be. To me, it was big because I was triggered, okay? When I was in the mental hospital, he would, I would talk to him. He would be so present. He would still be, you know, Love me like Christ loved the church. Didn't judge me. Just still felt like you're my wife. You know what I'm saying? Like you're the one for me. And I was like, he crazy. Just like me. Oh, shit. Like I don't, I, you know. And eventually I told, because at first I lied to him and told him I had a miscarriage. Yes, I lied. Because I'm like, you lied to me. I'm like you. And I'm going to keep the lie going. I was so toxic. My God. Ooh, I was so toxic. So, I, um... I ended up having an abortion. I ended up going to a mental hospital. Oh, I went through so much. Oh, my goodness, I went through so much. God, you are good. And I'm just, I'm just me paraphrasing this. I'm just paraphrasing. And I end up getting out of the mental hospital. Very good about to cry. I get out of the mental hospital, and I get back with my kids. And I'm just like, look, when I was in, I was like, I got to get out of here for my sons. I got to get out of here for my children. I have to make it back to so whatever these people want me to do i'm going to do it whatever so i end up getting out and i end up from that point moving forward my mental health was a priority for me my mental health was like top tier for me like any therapy i needed to go to anything i had to let go any situations i had to let go whatever the case may be whatever i had to do i did it okay so eventually my um my man and i we end up getting back together and not long after that I ended up getting pregnant again. Girl, you fertile. Girl, you fertile. Yes. With him, very fertile. So, <clears throat> so I ended up getting pregnant again. And, um, yeah, I ended up going on to have this baby. 
And during that pregnancy, I was scared. I didn't know if the baby would have died. I didn't know if I was going to have a miscarriage again. I didn't know if, you know, I was going to be punished for having an abortion this time before the end. It was just a lot. Like, I did not know. So, my whole pregnancy, I went through that thing, kind of slit on eggshells a little bit. Because I'm just like, I don't know what the outcome of this is going to be. I'm still legally married. But I promise you, I believe, this is my husband. Like, this is the man that God has for me. And so, I was like, I didn't want to be stressed. I didn't want the anything of that nature like i couldn't get in touch um with my ex he was gone i don't know where he was or whatever the case may be when trying to find him because i'm just like i have to get i gotta get this baby here okay so eventually my bottle of joy he got here and i absolutely loved him the second that i seen him and i was like why were you so scared why were you, why did you not think that your body would have been able to do what it's supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? And it was just a spirit of fear that was on me that I just had when I was pregnant, you know what I'm saying, with my son. And I ended up having him, he was perfect, absolutely perfect. I ended up pulling him out, as a matter of fact, yes, I pulled him out of me. And it was a beautiful thing, and my, um, his dad was just overjoyed, his first son, his first, um, from his womb, you know, because he had two, because I already had two. So he took him on, them on as if they were his kids already. So he had his own from, and he was just tears. I mean, like, thank you, just thanking me so much for bringing the baby. And I was like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Bring you out. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> we go on, and after that, I, I had to just, I had, I'm like, okay, legally, I'm still married. Okay spiritually he was gone when he left the door like there was a wrap like i had he had no i had no other obligation to this man at all whatsoever so i was like i have to dead i have to cut all ties at this point with this man so i wasn't pregnant anymore so i didn't want the stress of trying to find him and all this that third so i was talking to a lawyer and he was like just put in the newspaper i was like what have been in it so I put it in a newspaper. It had to run for a few weeks and then a month. So maybe like three months for my whole divorce to be over and done with. And he didn't have to have nothing to do with it at all. And after that, and I, and on the paper that my divorce decree is stamped. On the paper that my divorce decree is stamped with is the date that my husband and I got married on. Listen here. And the thing, I just found that out last year. I mean, I, literally, I just found this out last year. I was looking at my divorce decree. I was like, mm -hmm. I don't even look at that stuff anymore. But I looked at my divorce decree papers and the exact date that my husband and I got married, the one who God sent for me, the one who God, who found this wife, because I'm a good thing, <laughs> okay, is the day that we got married on. Who you know that can orchestrate something in that way? I know it may be unconventional. Oh, well, you were married and this, this, that, and third, and all this, that, and third. I hear what you Pharisees and Sadducees are saying. You really, I hear what y'all are saying. But the only, but my thing is, if you read the Bible, the Bible talks about when it's all right for somebody to be divorced and whatever the grounds and all that for divorce and abandonment is very is one of them. And prior to me, him physically living out the door, I was abandoned in the hospital having a baby. Do you understand what I'm saying? I was abandoned in the hospital having a baby. And I made up my mind, then I am done. Okay? I'm for Nick, baby. It's over with. I'm going to stay with you for the kids or whatever the case may be. But even then, I mean, I had divorced him in my heart before papers was ever signed. Before he ever even walked out the door again, it was over with. So let's be very clear on that. So... Here I am, minding my business, probably like a few weeks ago. And the Holy Ghost begins to download in me. I restored you. I restored the years. Okay? That the canker arm and the palm of arm and all these things. I restored to you the years. Because after Kenton, I told my husband, I said, I don't want to be pregnant at 39. I done spent my 20s pregnant and having babies. I'm, and I'm, she's, she's doing pretty good. Okay? So we're going to keep this trend going, okay? I do not want to be 30 having a baby. I want to be done with this and be finished. 
And he was like, ooh, I don't know. Oh, man, we just had Ken. He not even, you know, he's still in the dining room. And I was like, I don't care. Get it in. Uh, get it. Uh, we ain't doing it. And so he prayed about it, and God was like, boom, go ahead. And so, boom, we go ahead. And what does God do? He gives us double. Yes, we have twin girls. We had three boys, and then we turned around and had two girls. So God, and, and five is the number of grace. Okay? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. We have five beautiful children together, okay? Five beautiful kids together. My daughters, we have two daughters and three sons. And God, the other week, began to download me. I restored the years. I restored it. People always quote Job 225 without quoting the whole thing. Without finishing what it says. My dad said, I will compensate you for, let, I'm reading the KJV version. It says, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Lord, what do you mean? No, your disobedience. You praying to have a baby with this boy. You praying for him to be your husband. You praying and just forcing something that I have not ordained. You're forcing something that I did not ordain. You're so you know, Mark, um, Romans 8, 28 will be your portion because I'm going to restore to you. Yeah, when you're a hot mess, because that was my appointed time for you to meet your husband at the age of 26, at the age of 25 years old. That was my appointed time for you, Shamika, to meet your husband, was at 25 years old. But because I'm a good God, I work all things out for your good. I make all things new and beautiful for you. That's what I do. I restore. And when I restore, I don't give you back what you lost. I'm not going to give you the husband that I didn't ordain to be, to be this perfect man for you. No, I'm not going to do that. Mm -mm. I'm going to allow the man that I sent, that I ordained for you to, before the foundations of the earth, I'm going to allow him to see you now. Yeah, you're a hot mess now. But that's because of the consequences of your actions and what you want to do and what you went through. No, you're not the most, you know, you might not be in the right headspace mentally, but he's anointed to be your husband. No, you might not be the best, you know, but he's anointed to be your husband because I dang y'all to be together. Yeah, you might not, you know, be, you may be skeptical about because what you done been through and you hurt and you're triggered and y'all, these everything, but I anointed you to be his wife. Yeah, he may have a, 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 a you know, a sketchy past, you know what I'm saying, it's in regards to um, his promiscu his, um, him being promiscuous and, you know, a whoremonger and all these different things. But I anointed you to be his wife. So none of that. So because both of y'all was around here acting out. Both of y'all was around here doing what, you know, what you want to do. But at my point in time, with all the baggage, with all the luggage, with all the scars, with everything, I appointed this time for y'all to meet each other. And nothing can stop me. When it comes to restoration, when it comes to rest, rest, restoration and my appointed time for something to happen. I don't care what you got going on. This is my time that I set for it. So buckle up, buttercup, and grab a helmet because here we are. And when I tell you, this man that God sent to me is absolutely nothing like the man that I chose for me. What I liked, what I was attracted to. Don't get me wrong. He fine now. <laughs> Come on now. Y'all bet. He look good. Okay. Dark chocolate. Oh, beer. Fine. My man. Okay. My man. He looks good. Okay. Every, God knew how to make him. When he made it, he threw it away after he made it. That's me, the man. That's us. Okay. And so I, I say that to say, when God says he will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the pomeranian and the great armor which I sent them, I sent this.
because you've been disobedient. <laughs> you was in a whole idolatry. You out here doing what you wanted to do. You wanted all this down the third. Then you go, y'all have. You go, you. I get. I send you the man. And instead of me being God centered in this, because you know, y'all gonna do what y'all wanna do. Y'all gonna be doing, keep doing the traditional things or whatever the case may be. You go get pregnant. You have all this done in the third. You go get an abortion. That's what you do. Because I didn't think that my womb was blessed. I did not think. Once I had that miscarriage, baby, I was scared. I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I can keep doing this. I don't know. Because it took me a while to even have the two, the first two I did have. We had been together for years and I was not able to, I wasn't having babies. And I was like, something wrong with me. And then I got pregnant again. I was like, all right, maybe ain't nothing wrong. Then I ended up losing me. I'm like, no, still something wrong. But when I got with my husband, the man that God made for me, man, we've been trucking and trucking ever since then. I had to shut it down. You know what I'm saying? Because I, was, I had been pregnant since I met him. You know what I'm saying? But I say all that to say, verse 26 says, And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. God dealt with me in a way that only he could have dealt with me. I was broken, but not to the point where it killed me. I was broken to a point where I was strong enough to be able to stand before whomever and say, yes, I was married. Yes, I got a divorce. Yes, I was in idolatry. Yes, I got an abortion. Yes, I had a baby at 19. Yes, I, yes, all the, yes, I did it. Yes, I did. I was a hot, I'm a hot mess, but God has dealt wondrously with me. So in 2019, he said, Shamika, hey, come. Because you're not going to choose me for yourself. I'm going to let you know I've chosen you and I have work for you to do. I need you to go out and do it. So from 2019 to this very day, May of 2019 to this very day, I have been on fire for the Holy Ghost. I have been in covenant with my dad since May of 2019 to this very day. And I look back and just last week, week before last, whatever this case may be, I, I, I wrote it down. I'm pretty sure I did. God reminded me that I restored you. Job 225 been a factor in your life. I restored you to a husband you didn't even know to pray for. I blessed your womb to where I gave you double for the babies that you, come on. Twins? Twins and then daughters? What? Like, I, I, I restored to you the years. Because this is what I wanted for you to begin with. This was my plan for you all along. For you to be in covenant with a man that loves you like I love my church. When you're in a mental hospital, he like, he ten toes down with you. When you sit, when you've gone through these different, everything you've been through, everything you've, you've gone through, he has not left your side do you understand like he has not i restore to you because i sent all these calamities i sent these things to happen to you i sent it i allowed it to happen i baby i allowed it to happen okay because you want to do what you want i allowed it so when you got your husband you appreciated him you see the difference and you know the difference when it's me and when it's the enemy when it's me and when it's you when it's me and when it's your flesh. When it's me and when it's your desire. When it's me and, and, when, and when it's your will. You know the difference. So I restore. Because I sent things to come and eat up, you know, eat up stuff. Yeah. I, I allowed the miscarriage. Yeah. The abortion. Yeah. And then the different, you know, different curses. I, I allowed that. Yeah. The different, the, all that spiritual. I allowed it. For you to be built up to be the person that I have called you to be now. Because my, I say, I work it all out for your good, baby. I make all things beautiful for you. I do all things well. And I have dealt wondrously with you in this area. So you can stand before anybody with no shame in your game. With, no, with nothing. Nothing. Withholding nothing. And say, my dad restored to me. The years that the canker worm, the locust, the caterpillar, the palm, all this, the heat that he allowed to happen, that he sent amongst me. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. I, because eventually I'm eating plenty. I'm satisfied. I praise the name of the Lord, my God, because he has dealt wondrously with me and me. I have no shame in my game and what I done been through and who I have become 
and what my dad has, the oil that he has squeezed up out of me. Not ashamed of. So when God restores, please believe, baby, it's going to be something better than what you could have ever thought, prayed for, imagined. What is going to be what I, I didn't even, what I have, the beautiful family that I have, the wonderful husband that I have, the, the, the powerful children that I have, babe, I didn't know to pray for that. Mm -mm, I didn't know to pray for it. But when my dad restored me, he made it all well. He worked it all out for my good. And that's the same thing for you. People look at materialistic things. If you believe in God for other different things and trust in God for other stuff to happen in your life, and not like, listen here, when he restores you, it's going to be a good time. Cause my husband, and it's going to be fast. Oh baby, uh, it's going to be fast. Because my husband and I, it was as if I'd been knowing him all my life. It was as if I had been knowing him all my life. All my life. Like I had been, just comfortable. And the thing is, how could I be so comfortable after being so hurt, so damaged, so beat down? How could I be so comfortable enough to allow my heart to even be open to something like that? Because it was God's appointed time and I couldn't stop it. My feelings couldn't stop it. Time couldn't stop it because it was God's appointed time for me and restoration for me and my husband and my family and our family and everything that God has put for us to be able to have and produce in this earth together. So no matter how much junk we came with, it was God's time for us to meet. It was God appointed time for us to meet. And he restored us and dealt wondrously with us. So where I'm anointed to be his wife to deal with certain things that deals with him. He's anointed to be my husband to deal with certain things with me. And no one else will be able to deal with it because they're not so anointed to be with us. We're anointed to be with each other. And my Bible says what God brings together, let no man put us asunder. There's no way anything can come between my husband and I. Because God put us together. God ordained us to be together. God appointed for us to be together. He established it before the beginning and before he even framed the earth. Before the foundation, he established us to be together. He restored my womb to where I had a miscarriage, I had an abortion. He going to give me, he give me twins after that? What you, who you know? He gave me twins and a baby boy. He gave me three babies after a miscarriage and an abortion. He gave me three kids after that. After a miscarriage and an abortion, he gave me three babies and then twins on that? Who you know? Who you know? Verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Shamika and her family and that I am the Lord your God and that none else and my people shall never be ashamed. Corbina and I are not ashamed of anything we've been through. Corbina and I stand with our heads, our heads held high with everything we've been through. Corbina and I know that God is in the midst of us. Corbina and I know that the Lord is our God. Corbina and I know that there is none else, nobody but him. And he is the reason that we'll never be put to shame. So no matter what come our way, no matter what happens, no matter who come, who goes, we will never be put to shame. God appointed for us to be together. God restored us to each other. Four years, we've never seen each other. We were walking around the wilderness. Four years. Four years. We're just circling around, circling around, saying to God, say it, all right, now it's time. This is my time. I said for y'all right now. So for whoever out there, I don't know if you believe in God for a husband, if you believe in God to bless your womb, if you believe or think that you've done something so bad, or if you believe that God has um, not hearing your prayers, or if you, I wasn't even praying for any of this. So the fact that you're praying, you got a one up on me. <coughs> you got listen, you head of the game. Okay? So I, if you, God will restore to you. Okay? He will restore to you. 
I had a miscarriage, then had an abortion. God blessed me with three babies after that. Three. Had a horrible marriage and God blessed me with a husband I didn't even pray for. You believe in God for a baby, God will restore to you and he'll give it to you. You believe in God for a husband, he will restore you and he will give it to you. I don't care what you was out here doing this. I don't, it don't matter. When he says it's your time, it's your time. That's just what it is. Only thing you have to do is trust God. If you don't have a relationship with him, I didn't, I was playing, I, listen, I, I did what I wanted to do. And God still saw fit to bless me. It came with a lot of hell and a lot of warfare, but he still saw fit to bless me. So you, if you have a relationship with God, or you even thinking about a relationship with him, you're, you a you hundred steps ahead of where I was. A hundred steps because the relationship that I have now and the restoration that he does in my life now, oh, baby, it's a good time. So get with him, stick with him, and I promise you he'll make it all beautiful for you. I pray that this helped you. I pray that it spoke to you in some way, shape, form, or fashion that you believe that when God restores, it's a good time. When God restores, he, he leaves nothing out. When God, when it's his appointed time for you, nothing can stop it. Not even your circumstances. None of that matters. It's for you. So I pray you have a blessed rest of your day. And that um, that this helped. It helped you. So I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. God wanted me to talk about restoration of my womb and my marriage god wanted me to talk about the restoration of my womb and my marriage so yes you have a great day and be blessed in jesus name amen